Hey guys, what's up? While seeking ideas for viewers choice tree, one of my loyal viewers, Shazner, came along and gave me a link to one of his tech ideas and I followed it and I was blown away by how crazy the tech idea was. I told him that um, it seemed like a good tech, it's just that I probably won't be able to pilot it well, but I'm so interested in seeing how it works that I had to give it a shot myself. Now, I usually don't net deck, but when I do, I do not copy um, cards, uh, card for card. I add in some of my own twists. Uh, and his deck was not updated to the latest data pack, so I did him the favor. So here you see I have self-destruct. Um, yep. And my opening hand is has lots of money, but that's the only good thing about it. There's no ice, and there are three agendas, so that definitely goes in the mark. That's no go for Harmony Mad Tech. My mulligan hand is slightly better. No ice still, but at least there's a Jackson to save me from that. So basically, his deck is a flatline based deck that uh, works to use Kitsune, which you see right here, um, as a means of trapping the runner into making uh, runs that take lots of net damage. And once you have a Labyrinth server sc scored, you essentially have a very clear path to big victory if the runner has no AI breakers because you can force them to uh, access multiple snares in one run they cannot jack out and usually taking 6 or more net damage uh, is equal to sweet side so basically it's just a mishmash of all things net damage but it's not just a random mishmash it's things that um, help to increase the potential number of net damage dealt in a single run that's the way I describe his deck. So, yeah. Some key components include 3 copies of Snare and 2 copies of Executive Put Retreat. Those are very important cards that will ensure that you always your HQ is always live with Snare. This actually allows me to leave HQ open as I'm doing here. It's extremely unprofitable for him to run my HQ. He saw the Shock and the Shiku, I mean Snare and the Shiku, he knows better than to run it. Which makes it a very good place for stashing my future perfects and makes celebrity gifting relatively safe. So he's not running my R&D at all, which is a fantastic thing. In the meantime, I tried to bait him to running my remote server, but to no avail. It's okay. Um, I have an executive bootcamp in there, which is waiting to tutor a snare. Now in the meantime, he's playing uh, string theory, chaos theory. So he's slowly getting his all three of his breakers out. So, in, so uh, actually this is a perfect scoring window for me, but too bad I don't have any agendas with me and I cannot threaten any flatline anyway. I cannot risk him test running the breaker that he needs and coming to my server. Anyway, Kitsune is extremely porous, so uh, installing and double advancing in that server is asking for trouble. So now I have a very good setup. I have each of my two important servers, R&D and my score or kill remote. Both have various net damage sources in them. Now, I attempt to put a self destruct on the server and he runs it. Now, here I think, I'm think i thinking of what's the best way to punish him for running my server. Using self destruct is pretty problematic here. So instead, I decide to sack the executive bootcamp for hostile infrastructure because I do not want him trashing my uh, focus high grids just like that. So I fire off focus high grid and I allow him to trash my self destruct. I want to leave the Kitsune there, it's quite important. So my kill server is still live and I draw into my final copy of Kitsune. Very very lucky here. So I have two Kitsunes in a row. It's going to be nigh impossible for him to get through. 6 net damage, assuming I have two snares in hand, which I don't right now. But I need a lot more credits to bring the snares live. So in the meantime, he dirty laundries my hand and I make sure he doesn't steal my future perfect. So that's a bit dangerous, but still he must remember that there's a GQ and a snare in there. Now here I make a huge mistake. I opt to fire off Kitsune with hostile infrastructure. I know that you can easily trash hostile infra infrastructure. Um, uh, String Theory makes so many credits. Uh, she's so rich, so and I do not want hostile infrastructure trash. So I rest host hostile infrastructure force him to trash both my snare and my hostile infrastructure for 2 net damage on top of 3 net damage on the snare, but he's not dead yet. It just basically slows him down somewhat. 
So yeah, Shapers are very hard matchup because they have diesels and quality times which easily recover from all the net damage. In the meantime, I'm forced to sh reshuffle with Jackson Howard because I think I did stash my future perfects in archives. So yeah, that's a huge problem. And because I fired off hostile infrastructure, the snare, and Kitsune, I once had 16 credits, I'm now down to just one credit. So it leaves me in a very bad spot. I'm probably misplaying this heavily. I should not have res the hostile infrastructure or the Kitsune at all. I should have left double Kitsune in that server because that would be almost impossible to get past once I get two snares in hand. So that was a huge mistake for my part. I just really didn't want him to trash my hostile infrastructure because that is a very key card in my opinion. I want to deter him from trashing snares which and my, pet, my um, asset economy because his economy is way too good right now. I, my pet campaigns are virtually useless. I tried installing one on remote, perhaps delaying him for one click, but that's about it. There's no way I'm going to res it because I know the moment I res it, he's just going to trash it. Not equitable for me at all. So, meanwhile, I tried to make R&D taxing. So, definitely deter him from running it, even if he gets his torch out. And uh, in the meantime, he chucks two Divide AR Lab accesses into his heap. I saw that and I knew that he had found his... I mean, yeah, he has a third one available. So this tells me something. I'm not going to win through net damage. There's no way I can do that. Um, with three Divide AR Lab accesses, there's no way I can deck him and flatline him. The only way is to either chain lots of net damage in one single run or score up six agenda points for the win. Remember, I'm playing Harmony Mad Tech. I only need six points. So this basically means having to start over from scratch once more. I need to find all my uh, combo pieces, the Hokusai Grid, the Self-Destruct, and the Kitsunes, and lots of snares before I can even think of scoring in a remote server. I'm probably playing this wrong, you know? One major revision I made to Shesner's, Shesner's original deck was taking out the ambushes because I felt that if you're going to play ambushes like Cerebral Overwriters and Junebugs, you might as well play in Jinteki PE. And unfortunately, that's a huge mistake because right now, I was pushing so hard that I had a Junebug instead. With a Junebug, I can bluff on that remote server and he'll really have to think twice about running it. So yeah, I'm very disappointed with uh, the decision I made to remove the Junebugs. He doesn't have a Deus Ex anyway. So, there goes my last of my Jacksons, I remembered to reshuffle a snare back in. No, I had one more snare, snare left in my deck, so I figured I could leave that snare in my heap. Instead, I uh, brought back some of the more important upgrades and assets like uh, hostile infrastructure. So he dirty laundries my archives, and I show him the shiku, and I force him to steal the shiku because I know that he'll easily just take the net damage otherwise. He had basically has infinite money and infinite cards, which is very hard to deal with um, if I'm playing this kind of deck which attempts to flatline the runner and make R&D taxing. He's basically nullifying me on both counts. There's no way I can score agenda safely um, in this context. Installing and advancing anything is a uh, one-way sentence uh, to him getting... Yeah, it's not good for me, basically. And to make matters worse, he has his entire rig out right now. So now, basically, the only thing I can do is to show him the future perfect. And he can run my server, and I can't do anything about it. Or can I? So here's what I attempt to do. First, I tax him by playing the Himitsu Bako. It costs him two to break with battering ram, which is pretty cool. Next, I raise the hostile infrastructure and force him to access his... So I have three credits left. All that down the drain. This deck requires way too much money. In Shesna's iteration, he used uh, Shell Corporation, which is pretty nice. Uh, you just park it behind a advanced June bug and the runner cannot afford to run it. But the problem with that is that you really, really need the money. Once if if there's a nine if there's nine credits on a shell corporation as the runner, I would most certainly run it, even if it means taking four net damage to deny the corp nine credits. That's huge. 
Um, and here I make a further mistake. I raised the hostile infrastructure when it went to trash attack campaign. So now I attempt to feebly uh, um, defend my hostile infrastructure, and that obviously won't work out, work out very well. He immediately trashes it easily. So as you saw that I really like Himitsubako in Chestnut's deck. Uh, he didn't include it, but um, what uh, many people don't realize is that Himitsubako is the only uh, barrier that doesn't have to end the run because you can bounce it back to your hand. So if you're trying to bait the runner into making a death run, um, yeah, Himitsubako is completely fine because you can bounce it back uh, when they are making the death run, and otherwise it forces out a barrier breaker, which is pretty nice. But back to the way I played it, I think I re relied way too much on hostile, hostile infrastructure, and as I'm talking right now, he's just basically sniping the 1 in 5 labyrinth servers from my hand every single time. Lucky or unlucky, that doesn't matter because right now I've basically considered the game. He basically ruined all my plans to flatline him. Uh, this deck requires way too much money to flatline. Every single Kitsune into snare access takes 6 credits. And if you want self-destruct to deal 3 net damage, you need to have more credits than the runner, which clearly won't happen this game. And yeah, I guess I'm just playing it wrongly. A double stack Kitsune into uh, into Hokusai Grid does 7 net damage. But even then, it's quite easy for him to overcome that. He just needs to draw up and then make a Hail Mary run. Of course, he has to be worried about Junbang. That's my biggest regret. If I had a Junebug in this deck, things would be so different. Um, one of the key grails of one of the key tenets of Shesna's deck is using Chum into Kitsune, which does incredible amounts of damage. Not gonna work in this game, obviously, because Torch breaks Chum for one credit. I do have a Chum somewhere, but it's pretty useless. Uh, yeah. So basically. Shapers are able to shut down a lot of the yes, here's the charm and it's pretty useless against torch. Uh, uh yeah, shape my this deck is pretty useless against shapers in general. You really have to rush agendas out if you want to stand any chance against shapers at all because they can draw so many cards in one click. They can get through your eyes with ease, Deus X. This guy doesn't even run Deus X, but he knows the tricks that Jinteki is capable of and he's able to circumvent it by running with lots of cards in hand for him. Um, this might do better against criminals or anox. Problem with criminals is that um, account siphon. It contradicts your strategy of not wanting to ice up HQ and of course anox disrupt your strategy completely. Uh, imp, noise, etc. It's all very nasty to deal with. So basically this deck is quite weak to all matchups in my opinion. I guess I'm just not playing it well enough. Um, yeah, hostile infrastructure is really not doing any work at all this game. Um, as you notice by now, I'm not commenting on the game anymore. Um, I, I'll just let it run in the background to my inevitable loss. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, so now basically his only job right now is to find the last agenda and win the game, which is pretty annoying to do in uh Harmony Mad Tech. Uh, yeah. Here I attempt to advance the agenda as a Hail Mary because I was about to deck myself out. Uh, so might as well just do something. I don't... I guess this would be different if I attempted to play it with a June bug. Think, yeah. Then it becomes more of a Jinteki mind game where do you really think you're safe from uh, running my server? Do you really think there's an agenda? I definitely don't think I'm proficient enough when it comes to manipulating traps and trappy eyes to my advantage. Like, I fired off the kitsune on my remote server too prematurely and my hostile infrastructures were never guarded well at all. And here he gracefully allows me to score a 3-pointer so that I don't look like I completely lost this game. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, there was a future perfect in my archives from the self-destruct way early on and he eventually steals it for the win. So, uh, unfortunately I don't have much to say. There are some playstyles which I'm just not cut out for. There's a reason why I almost never feature any replicating perfection glacier games in my uh, channel, even though it's clearly one of the strongest archetypes as proven at Worlds. 
simply because that playstyle just isn't mine. Same here, I don't think this track based flatline style of play really suits me very well. 